Hello traders, Corey Mitchell here with TradeThatSwing.com. In this video, I wanna talk about something I get asked about quite a bit, and that is how much capital you need to start Forex trading. So we're gonna discuss whether you want a day trade or swing trade and how that's gonna affect the capital you need. We're also gonna look at your income expectations because there's a minimum that you need based on the risk you're taking on for each trade. And then there's also how much do we actually wanna make from our trading, which is gonna affect the amount of capital we need for trading. So let's start out with just a simple day trading example. I was discussing uh, a few trades recently uh, with a student and this was one of the trades that we discussed. We have, uh, I'll give you a brief rundown of the strategy in that we had this up move. It's completely erased. So I call this a technical turnaround where we have the potential for the trend to reverse because we've had a uh, one of the waves of the uptrend has now been fully reversed. And if we start to see the lower swing highs, then we can look for a trade. I also look for things like little double tops. So we had a pullback or what I call a double pump. So we had a pullback and I like to see symmetry. So I wanted to see a pullback up into this area, but it didn't quite get there. This low was a little bit uh, lower, or sorry, this high was a little bit lower than this high. Then we have another drop, another push higher, and another drop. Now we start to see some symmetry where this low, pretty close to this low, uh, about the same. And then we have a move back up, which turns over near the same spot this one did. So that is our entry point. And one of the simplest uh, day trading targets you can use is just a two to one. Whatever your risk is, uh, you multiply that by two. So if you have a in this case we have a 2.6 pip stop loss and so our target is 5.2 pips what does that mean for how much capital we need this is just a trade example but we can use it to look at the absolute minimum amount of capital we'd want to have in our account to make this trade so the 2.5 pips and the absolute smallest position we can take is what's called a micro lot. And if you have a micro lot position in the Euro USD and your account is in US dollars, each pip movement is going to make or lose you 10 cents. If we multiply that by the 2.5 pips or 2.6 pips in this case, that means we're risking 25 cents on this trade if we sold a micro lot and the price hits our stop loss. So very small risk, 25 cents. The, we want that to equal 1% of our account so that we can lose lots of trades, but we're not gonna lose all our capital. So to do that, we can just multiply it by 100. And that means the absolute minimum we'd want in our account is $25. Now, that's not a lot of capital. And remember, the smallest position size we can take is $1,000, which means if we only have $25 in our account, we're leveraged 40 to one, meaning the broker's allowing us to take a position 40 times as big as our capital amount. Just something to keep in mind. Now let's say our stop loss was five pips. And because I mentioned it's, if you're trading with a, with a large spread, it's you're not going to see these trades where you have a 2.5 uh, 2 pip stop loss because you're going to have to add on the pip spread. And so you're going to end up with more trades that are 3.5 pips, 4, 5, 6 pip stop losses. In that case, multiply it again by 10 cents because that's the smallest position size we can take, the amount that we're going to make or lose for each pip. That means we're risking 50 cents on a five pip trade, five pip stop loss, multiply by 100. And we know that our minimum balance we could have is $50 to trade in a risk controlled way. Now again, we'd still be highly leveraged, but at least we have a stop loss where we're potentially limiting our loss to 50 cents. And risking 1% of our account just means if we work backwards from this, if we have a $50 account and we lose 50 cents, we've only lost 1% of our account, and that's good. We wanna keep it at 1% or below. 
if you're just starting out, you're actually going to want to drop this to maybe 0.25% or half a percent and then work up to 1%. Uh, don't start risking more from the start. And once you're doing well, even risking 1% of your account per trade, you can make a lot of money. Eight pips, stop loss, then you need about $80 in the account. The problem with this, these would be like the absolute bare minimums you could have just to make these trades. A lot of brokers have a minimum balance or a minimum deposit of $100. The problem with all these is if this is all you have in your account and your balance drops, you're now going to be risking more than 1% to take any one of these trades. So if you have $80 and it drops to $50, now when you take that trade, that risk is represents much more than 1% of your account balance. So we want to double or triple these minimums. And so I'd say the absolute minimum you'd want is if you're taking trades in this 2 to 2.5 to 5 pip stop loss range, you'd want at least $100. If you have some trades that have a little bit bigger stop losses, you're going to want to bump that up to at least two, $300. And really, if, if you want to make any sort of income, I'd increase it up to 500 So on that note, let's talk a little bit about the income potential. And I'd assume or assume that you can make 10% a month returns and that's based on over many months because we're going to have not so good months. In one month you might make 100% return but in another month you might make nothing, another month you might make nothing and you might have a negative month one month. So just assume that once you become somewhat consistent you can return 10% a month. and then you can use this for whatever income projections you need. And I think this is a fairly conservative estimate with um, leverage involved. And it's definitely possible to make more, but it's also possible to make less consistently. So until you prove to yourself otherwise by your actual trading that you can make more than this amount, then assume that 10% is what you can make and base your expectations on that. This is especially important if you want to become a full-time trader. You're trying to figure out how much capital you need in your account to cover your expenses, that sort of stuff. Assume 10% at the beginning. If, if you do a lot better, hey, great, then no harm done. But if you do worse, you know, at least you didn't shoot for the fences and assume that you're going to make 100% a month or something. Once you're actual trading, once you're actually trading, you have several months of profits, then you can start to base your returns on that. And you know, you can project out, maybe you're seeing that you're making some mistakes, you realize that you're gonna get better over time, you can maybe fudge the numbers a little bit, but really until you've proven otherwise, make this your assumption. So if you have $1,000 in your account, you're gonna make about $100 a month. 5,000 in your account, you're going to make about 500. If you have a $10,000 account, maybe you make $8,000 a month in income. And again, this is just an assumption to start. Once you start to get actual data based on how you trade, then you can start fudging these numbers and adjusting your expectation accordingly. So if you find that you're actually making about 20% a month, maybe one month you make 30, another month you make 10, next month you make 20. You know, that, that's averaging about 20% a month. So then we can alter these. So on $1,000, then you'd be making $200 a month. On a $10,000 account, you'd be making $2,000. So that's how we can assess how much capital we need for day trading. And then we can also look at the income. How much do we need to produce an income level that we want? And if you're just starting out, you have to make some sort of assumption. Don't make it outlandish. 10% is actually a really good return for most people. And if you can make more, great, but don't assume that you can when you're starting out. Let's switch over to the British pound US dollar to talk about a swing trade and what that might do for our capital. So interestingly, we have pretty much the exact same setup here that we had on the 
euro usd one minute chart but it's playing out on a longer time frame we have this uh, transition to the upside and then we have a low this one does make quite a bit of a higher high it pulls back and we have these three stall outs all in the same area so i'm watching for the price to touch these prior swing lows uh, we get that here and then i'm looking for any sort of reversal higher so we could have jumped in right on this huge bullish engulfing pattern or we have this little pop-up, a stall out, little consolidation here, and once the price starts moving up, no matter which entry method was used, the stop loss in this case is about 60 to 65 pips. And for swing trades, we can put uh, near the prior swing highs or just below it, it's a fairly conservative estimate. We could also just use a risk reward ratio of two to one, three to one, in this case, putting it near this swing high ends up being a four to one risk reward ratio. So what does that mean for how much capital we need in our account? This is a typical type swing trade and it gives us a nice reference for how much capital you'd wanna have in your account. If the stop loss is 62.5 pips in this case, we multiply that by the smallest position size, which would be a micro lot. And this, this is actually the how much the price moves for each pip. And that would give us a risk of 625 on this trade if we took the smallest position size. So we bought a micro lot right here. We put our stop loss down here. If that stop loss is hit, that means we're losing $6.25. I don't know why that says 200. Put it back to 100. And that means we need a minimum balance of $625 in our account to make this trade. Because if our balance is $625 and we lose $6.25, we've only lost 1% of our account and that's what we want. 1% or less risk. If we have a 100 pip stop loss, then we need at least $1,000 in our account. So these would be the minimums that you'd want for swing trading. Now, you could possibly swing trade on the 15 minute and 30 minute charts, for example, and maybe most of your stop losses end up around 30 pips. In that case, you need about $300. Again, we'd wanna double or triple these. So the minimum, I'd say is absolute minimum to start with 1,000, but ideally you'd wanna start with two, $3,000. This is also gonna help us with our you know, potentially making some income off of this account. So double these numbers. This just means if we lose a bit of money, we still have enough in there to trade in a risk controlled manner. Let's talk a little bit about the profit expectations. With swing trading, we're gonna be taking less trades than day trading. We don't have quite the turnover with day trading we can have the same risk reward ratios, but we can be in and out multiple times in a day. Whereas with swing trading, maybe we're in multiple times in a week. So our swing trading is going to be a little less. So I usually knock down the assumption of what you're going to make. Again, assume you're going to make 5% if you're starting out. If you're trying to project how much income you can make, start at 5% until you prove otherwise. You can definitely make more, but a lot of traders, most traders lose money over several months or the longer term. So 5% is a good thing to strive for, or a good return to strive for at the beginning. And again, if you make more, great. But it's better to err on the side of conservative. Then as you get a few months under your belt, you can of course adjust your expectations accordingly. So at the start, you know, if you have a thousand dollar account and you can get to this 5% return, you're looking at an income of about $50 a month. If you have a $10,000 account, you're looking at an income of about $500 a month. Again, these can definitely get ramped up if you become a good trader, but don't assume that you're a good trader just when you're starting out. Start with these types of estimates so that you get an idea of how much capital you need to trade currencies, both for controlling risk and for how much income you want. So a couple different ways to look at how much capital you need. I hope that helps you out. And until next time, happy trading.